Hi guys, welcome back to Under the Hood of series with me Craig. Today we're going to be having a look at React hooks. So this is predominantly the state and effect hooks. So when hooks were introduced, it cleaned up many of the issues that people had with the more arguably frustrating features, such as classes and lifecycle methods. Uh, so, today, so today we're going to be building our own uh, React engine with hooks, so we can understand the mechanisms at work for use state and use effect. Um, so we're not going to be including fiber or reconciliation or the change detection, so just a basic React API. So the plan for today, we're going to look at React, some of the core patterns involved, uh, build our own bare bones version, then move on to hooks, uh, an overview of hooks, then the use state hook, then building our own use state hook, and then the use effect hook, and then building our own use effect hook. So starting with React patterns, the couple of core design patterns that React follows, and some we can apply to our own version. There's JSX, uh, under, under the hood, elements are just plain old JavaScript objects, and components are just functions. There's the idea of pure rendering, which is, uh, so each instance of a render follows this idea that the render is the component plus the data. And the state machine, uh, this one directional data flow from the parent to child, uh, and change detection, uh, so i.e. updates to the state, uh, force updates for all the children who need it. So we're going to build our own super simple version of React and then add hooks to this. To do that, we need a, a basic version of the React engine, which should render a component with some props and return the component for interacting with later. So on the left here, we've got our React object. Um, our render takes the component, takes some example props and executes the component with these example props, runs render and then returns the component so that we can interact with later. We've got our component on the right, who just uh, console logs, uh, the render logs, and uh, with uh, a type property and uh, an inner property, which just takes one of the variables on the props. And then uh, at the very bottom, we can see the uh, output that's rendering. So we've got our first render, renders our object with our property likes, and then a re-render, uh, which then uh, logs the same, the same object with the type and with the inner with likes again. So now we have a base component, which is our rendered, which is rendered by our basic React engine. So React hooks, a uh, quick, quick reminder about hooks. Uh, so this is a quote taken from the documentation. Hooks let you use state and other React features inside a pure component without writing a class. Classes would often confuse people and add bloat to the code. So this was a real win. A couple of other, other good reasons to do this. Um, it was easy to build and reuse the stateful logic. So you wouldn't have to introduce render prop patterns or harder components, which often came with their own complexity. It was easier to split components into relatable pieces, uh, so into smaller functions based on what pieces are actually related, what things are related. Um, it removes all this confusion around the many different lifecycle methods and when to use them, what's the difference. Uh, and also there's no fundamental changes that are required to your React knowledge. It just introduces this more direct way for you to use features that you already know. So it's the same old React. Also easier for typing, because at the end of the day, hooks are just functions, um, whereas hard components and render props introduced a bit more complexity. And it's easy to test. With the React on test utils, uh, you can use the app method, which helps you trigger uh, like real life cycle events within a browser almost. So onto the use state hook, a uh, couple of the core concepts. It allows you to use state inside of a pure component. And it takes, and it will take any primitive, so a string, array, and an object. Um, according to the doc, it returns a reducer state and an action dispatcher, but we can really simplify this into just a property value and a setter. Also, the number one rule in the documentation is that um, if hooks are used inside of a conditional or some kind of or some kind of nested block, it would throw the order out of whack uh, on the render and cause havoc. So it is crucial um, that they stay at the top level. And this is actually very important for our hooks mechanism as well. And we're going to be examining why later. So onto, uh, we're going to be expanding our React engine here on the left. Um, we're going to be adding a state store for the values, that's the array, and a state index, which is our hook counter, which is uh, the index set to zero. We've also got our use state function, and we can look at that now. So it checks if the current index has a value in the state. If not, we set the default. 
Then it builds a setter for the value and increments the index for the next hook. Uh, and then finally, we return our value and our setter. On the right, we've added our state to our component. You can see we've now got our count and our set count and name and set name. We've also expanded our inner object property. You can see at the bottom there. So in our users count and name. And we've also added a couple of manual methods to trigger these state changes on the object that's returned. Uh, and by manual, I mean that we can now we'll be calling app.click and app.render, um, which will force the state changes and force the re-render. And this is again because we, we, as mentioned before, we don't want to worry about reconciliation or change detection. Uh, that's entirely its own subject. So, uh, on to actually utilizing these methods. Uh, so we've got our first render, um, and then we've got our first re-render, which again, the inner the display zero likes for Steve, but both of them, nothing has changed yet. Now we call click, updating our local state, then re-rendering, which now uh, you can see it's incremented our state from zero to one likes for Steve. Then we click again and then uh, execute our person arrived, change that to Peter. And then on a re-render, we now get our two likes for Peter. So now we've got our state uh, being updated and then logging when we render and re-render. So one main issue with this, uh, this the state, it's, it's very tightly coupled to one component, as you can see. Uh, so, and the state should really be held in module scope or a single state, single store, which is named switch to the component, so that you can introduce many different components. React doesn't just work with one component. Ours is very cu tightly coupled to one component. That's a big issue. Moving on to the user, the user effect hook. So according to the documentation, it's a function which runs after the initial render and after every update. It's a, uh, so uh, it's created during the render. It's run in definition order, similar to our use state. It runs after a given lifecycle event. So this is usually a mount or the update. Uh, and so again, yep, so i.e. the first render and or when a dependency is changed. And that's so that it's consistent with what you want rendered. Uh, and then lastly, it returns a function. And this is because some effects require cleaning. So for example, unsubscribing. And then again, it follows the same number one rule as use state. So we can't be calling this with inside a conditional or inside a nested block, it has to be called at the very top. So we've introduced our use effect hook. So let's uh, run through the code. So first of all, we're caching this, the store index. Uh, we're gonna check if the dependency has changed in the state. And this is our variable tracking mechanism. If, if there's no dependency or it's changed, we're gonna run our hook and update the store index value with that dependency value. So we're going to create the coupling there. Uh, then we in increment the store index for future hooks. This could be an effect or a state uh, to use their own index. And then finally, we return our function. Uh, so you can see that the way that our effect hooks also bend on the state index is very similar to that of the use state. Um, they both rely on this deterministic order of the values in the state of values in the state array. So all state and effect hooks must be called in the same order. So their state index can be found in the same location in the state array. So I'll, I'll come on to that more in a second when we go through what's actually happening uh, when we're out, when we're logging. So on the, uh, there's a lot going on here, apologies. So um, we've updated our component to use our effect. On the left at the top, it's just uh, the effect code from the previous slide. So don't worry too much about that. At the bottom on the left, we've updated our component to use our effect hook. So we're going to be listening for changes on name. So previously this was just state. Um, so now we've added this use effect hook and also we've uh, added an unsubscribe method for calling our unsubscribe. On the right, we've now got, we're now utilizing uh, our hook. And what I've done is I've uh, logged out the state uh, array with each render to help us follow what's going on. So with the first render, uh, we've called use state twice. So our state, our cached index is now two inside of use effect. So the state value for this is undefined as it doesn't exist yet. So we're going to run our callback and write the new entity into the state. So under the index of two, it's going to be our dependency value, which is Steve. So it's going to be index two and Steve. Uh, so the state now has so this state array now has local state values and effect values in a deterministic order. And it's all based on the index, which is where it's called in the component. And this is completely reliable as the order should not change. And remember, this was our rule number one of hooks. So let's look at further re-renders. 
So uh, we've got a re-render, so the effect does not change because the, um, the third value in the state array uh, is the same. So Steve still equals Steve. Uh, again, uh, we, we click and then uh, we're not watching for the counter, we're watching for the name. So again, Steve has not changed. And then finally, we, we change the name to Peter. And on re-render, you can see that the third index would not would have changed on this render. So uh, it's now changed to Steve, so the effect will run. And then uh, finally, we're unsubscribing. So two main issues with this. Um, one is that it works with a single value, not an array of values. However, this is very easy. This would be very easy to expand. Um, we can use the same store index and store an array of dependencies on the state, not just a single value. And then we can iterate over those values to check for changes. In the same way we've checked for Peter, we can actually check for the array, check an array of values and ensure they were the same. Uh, second issue being ours is before the render, not after. This would actually need a real fundamental change to our React engine, and it's not really worth fixing for this proof of concept. So that's it, guys. Uh, I hope this was useful, or at the very least, somewhat interesting. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed learning about hooks and have a much deeper under, deeper appreciation for them as a feature. Um, I feel they've really helped uh, move the front-end developer experience forward, as I'm seeing them now used in other libraries as well. You can find a gist for this code at my GitHub, so Craig Torb, and then it's under react-hooks, uh, might the gist. Thanks, and stay tuned for more. Coming up next week will be a source maps, so all about the internals of source maps and how they work. So thanks, and take care.